Howdy folks. So what you're looking at is the power head, uh, the motor head to my Dyson DC-23, which is uh, my vacuum cleaner. And uh, this thing, you can take the brushes out uh, to clean them, clean the hair out of them and stuff. Uh, and I do that every once in a while. But this time I actually wanted to fully wash all the plastics. So I actually tore apart uh, the entire power head and also uh, the rest of the vacuum cleaner um, uh, just so that I could get the electrics out um, so that I could wash the plastics. And I thought I might as well, before I put it all back together again, show you um, how this thing is wired because I think it's actually kind of interesting. Because what I expected to find in here was a little circuit board which controlled the motor. Um, so this is this is the motor here. It's just uh, your sort of your, your standard universal motor with a uh, with the gearbox and uh, the, the the actual brushes attach one on either side of this. And I expected to find a little circuit board um, or some sort of uh, circuit breaker or something because there is a momentary um, power button on these on these power heads that turns the thing on and off. And if you stall out the motor, um, it will also automatically shut itself down and then you can press the button and then it restarts. So there's clearly some sort of intelligent logic surrounding this, and I expected to find a board with that logic inside the power head, but I didn't find anything. And uh, that's what led me to actually take apart the, uh, the actual vacuum cleaner itself, because actually the brains are actually in the vacuum. And uh, the way that they're getting all of the signal data back is uh, it's actually quite smart. So what you find is just your standard motor, there's a terminal block, there's nothing active in there. And then for the, uh, for the power button, there is a micro switch. So in this case, just a, uh, your bog, bog standard uh, you know, micro switch, little resistor. I'll explain what that's for. And then after this wheel joint, there's another micro switch with a little uh, catch. And so this, this shoe here uh, basically goes on to the back of the vacuum cleaner, which I'm not actually sure where that even is at this point. Um, but uh, the idea is that you can hook this on for storage and uh, this will this uh, switch prevents the unit from starting up when it's in the storage uh, position. So if you somehow turn the vacuum on with this attached, it won't start up. And uh, there's there's that's it. There's 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 no electronics at all in this. It's only electrics. And there are three uh, pins to this. And so I, I sort of drew out the schematic for this. And uh, this is what's inside the power head. So you have the motor, which is connected directly to two of these two of these, uh, these pins here. And the third pin is uh, quite smart how they're getting this, this multiple, these multiple states of the system through one, uh, one pin. So it commons to the center pin through one side of the motor. And this, this shoe interlock, which is this thing right here, is uh, the first thing. And so if, and this is a normally closed uh, micro switch. So if this, so basically if the, the, the microcontroller sees uh, basically an open circuit between uh, this signal pin and this contact pin here, then it knows that the shoe is connected and uh, you know don't allow this to turn on. There's no other way it could turn on. Uh, in the event that it isn't on the shoe, this is closed, and it sees 470K through that resistor, and at that point it knows that the, that the switch is open, and if you close the switch, this is a normally open switch, it will then see a short, and that signals to turn on the motor. And so that's how you can get basically both switch information uh, through to the, uh, the, the processor on this side with just three wires. And uh, I'm not entirely sure why they, uh, they did it this way, why they, did, they didn't actually put the board in the uh, power head. I'm not quite sure uh, their design decision behind that, but uh, it's, you know, it's, what, it's whatever they did. So anyway, so I'm going to put this back together. And the reasoning behind this, of course, is I want to see, you know, once I saw this, I said, okay, I want to know what the circuitry is. Uh, that's doing this. So that's why I tore apart the rest of the unit, also, you know, for cleaning as well. And uh, it's very difficult to get these things open, uh, primarily because the wheels are clipped on, and there's really no better way to do it other than to insert, you know, objects and pry it off. And you can see I've marked the inside of the wheel, not the outside, but the inside. Um, by the way, this vacuum, I believe, is dated, uh, yeah, it's dated 2009, so, you know, it's almost a 10-year-old vacuum. And so, uh, basically, as for, you know, electronics in this thing, I mean, there's just a motor in here, and then there is a, a big, big clunking power switch here. And this is not a momentary switch like the power head has. This is an actual toggle switch. So it, you know, press it once and it goes open, press it once and it goes closed. 
And so basically there's four wires here. Um, there's the two wires that come in from the power cord, the retractable power cord, so live and neutral. And then there's the two wires that go to the motor in here. And this motor has an over temp cutout in it. Uh, and I know that because I've actually tripped it. Uh, because there are two filters in this thing. I know Dyson has great marketing and they love to say, oh, our, our vacuum cleaner doesn't have filters. It's all cyclonic. Well, no, it's not. It has two filters. Uh, it has the user changeable filter or the, usable, the user washable filter, which everybody knows about. And it also has this, which is an internal filter, um, which you can't get at unless you take the thing apart. And uh, I'm pretty sure this is a, a spare part you can buy. And you can see it's all carbon black on the inside from the motor brushes. So, uh, yeah, don't let anyone tell you that they don't have filters in them. And if these things gunk up, this thing will over temp uh, because it can't cool the motor because it uses the airflow through it to cool the motor. Uh, but anyway, that aside, um, I'm assuming that maybe if they sold this without a power head, they would simply connect these, the, the motor directly to the switch. But in my model, it actually has a circuit board, which actually sits right here. And uh, this is actually entirely for controlling the power head. Um, so it has no other function inside this unit, which uh, is, is why I'm just not sure why they didn't put this in the power head directly. But anyway, so let me, let me just get something to point with here. So basically, the, the line and neutral, they come in on these two terminals here. And the motor, uh, the actual regular vacuum motor connects to these two terminals here. And uh, these two black wires connect to the switch. So basically, neutral is always connected. And then the live goes through the switch to the internal motor. So basically, this, this, basically, this board basically does nothing um, if you have, uh, you know, if you're ignoring the power head. Now, the power head actually connects to this five pin header here and uh, only three of those pins are actually used. And so the way that the circuit works is the line comes in, goes through these resistors, um, through this diode and into this cap, through this resistor into this cap. So it creates a little Pi filter, which supplies power to this chip here, which is actually a PIC 12F683 8-bit uh, microcontroller, which I'm actually quite familiar with. I've used this part before. and. So what this part does is it basically it senses the resistance, of course, on that, uh, on that third pin. And it switches on this FET. And uh, this FET is what actually connects uh, you know, the line through to the uh, power head. Uh, the neutral is always connected, of course. And uh, this FET is cooled. You can see all these, all these uh, through holes. And they've sort of, they're sort of just using the copper on the back of the board as a heat sink for it. And uh, it also measures the voltage across these two resistors here, which are in parallel. And these are the current shunt for the, for the, the motor in the, in the power head. And uh, if it senses that the current is too high, it will cut this off. And that's how they're doing. Uh, so this is basically acting like a very complex circuit breaker with a, uh, a soft on-off functionality. That's really what this microcontroller does. So I suspect that there's not that much code in this. Uh, but, you know, they need the analog to digital converter and all that stuff, so that's why they're using a PIC-12 and not a PIC-10 or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much all it is. Uh, the, the caps are um, they're Panasonic branded, so they're uh, you know, very high quality. I don't see anything wrong with the design or layout of this board, um, so I'm just going to put this thing back in, but, you know, I just wanted to see what it was like. And, uh, yeah, so now I have the uh, fun task of putting all the little various bits and pieces of plastic back together. I have to finish cleaning this first, but at least the power head can go back together now. So anyway, that's uh, all I wanted to show uh, in, case, uh, in case no one's shown this before, just because uh, I found it quite interesting, uh, the location of this. Because, I mean, it cost them some amount of money to put a, a, third, a third conductor into the power head because this is a double insulated appliance, right? There's no ground, so, um, you know, they really only did need two... Uh, two conductors uh, if they, you know, if they put this board in the power head. So I'm not quite sure why it's uh, in the unit. I'm sure some, I'm sure the company had a reason for that. But anyway, so hopefully that was interesting. As, and uh, as, as always, thanks for watching.